The saber toothed tiger was certainly one hell of a beast. With sharp canines believed to be between 7 to 8 inches long on average, and a muscular build, this thing is certainly what nightmares were made of. Now, technically, the scientific name for the saber toothed tiger is the Smilodon, and Smilodon can be broken into three species Gracilis, Fatilis, and Populator. It's believed the latter two were descendants of the Gracilis, which was believed to be the smallest of the three, weighing between 120 to 220 pounds. The largest of the three, the Populator, was from South America, unlike the previous two, who were native to North America, and it's believed to have weighed anywhere between 485 to 960 pounds, standing around just under four feet tall, well on all fours. To no surprise, these things were apex predators, and are one of the most popular, or at least one of the most well-known prehistoric animals. But as we know, at some point, they went extinct. And although there seems to be a lot of debate how, we may finally have the answer. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host for this one, Jared Bronstein, and and today we're talking about the saber toothed tiger. Before we get into this one, we gotta give a quick shout out to our newest channel, Top 10 Central. Come laugh with us over at Top 10 Central, where some familiar faces, myself included, react to some of the most outrageous content out there. Now, I guess technically on here, I'm more of a familiar voice than face, but you guys get what I was trying to say. We'll have a link pop up on the screen, so check it out and let us know in the comments down below that you came from LBQ. I got a bit of a competition going and I wanna prove you guys really are the best. So, you know, don't let me down here. As always, feel free to drop some questions you'd like answered in the comments below, or simply just drop your thoughts on this video. I'll be replying to some comments from a previous video to wrap this one up, but for now, we need to get right into it. Now, if you guys want a more in-depth video regarding the saber-toothed tiger in general, check out our video, What If Saber-Toothed Tigers Didn't Go Extinct, from a couple years ago. Although, as tends to be the case with a lot of videos regarding prehistoric animals, it seems our understanding of the saber-toothed tiger is constantly evolving. Although some of what we do know has been up for debate. A prime example is if these things were pack animals or ventured out on their own. Some believe they were solo predators and fended for themselves, while others believe, based on the fossil evidence found, that they may have been pack animals caring for one another and living in groups. Now, given the fact that there is a lot of debate over whether or not these things hunted together, as you could imagine, there has been even more debate, or should I say disagreement, when it comes to how they went extinct. It's believed these beasts still roamed the land as recently as 10,000 years ago. And although 10,000 years seems like a long time ago, in comparison, it's believed they first graced our Earth about 12 million years ago. Meaning these guys managed to live and evolve on Earth for a good 11,900,090 years before extinction. So what could have possibly happened within the last 10,000 years that all of a sudden these things no longer stood a chance? Let's break it down. A very common belief, of course, is the Ice Age. But what many don't know about the Ice Age is that it didn't necessarily resemble the movie Ice Age. Over the course of the millions or hundreds of millions of years, they can technically occur. In fact, we're currently living through an Ice Age right now. It just so happens we're in the warm interglacial that started about 11,000 years ago, not long before the extinction of the saber-toothed tiger. Which means technically the saber-toothed tiger was still finding a way to thrive even when the earth was covered in ice. In fact, the last period of glaciation, when temperatures really drop and a large portion of the world was covered in ice, was only 20,000 years ago. Again, saber-toothed tigers were alive and well during these times, so clearly they somehow found a way to survive during the Ice Age. Technically, humans did as well, but again, we're not talking about Ice Age like the movie, just the Earth's temperature being below a certain degree that it's scientifically considered to be an Ice Age. And within the Ice Age, there are certain short-term periods of warmth, which is what we're currently living through. But what about the other animals? There was a popular theory that the cold temperatures led to a decline in food supply for the saber-toothed, who eventually starved to death. However, this theory also has holes in it because some of the most recent fossils found at the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles actually shows that the teeth of the remains were damaged and scratched, suggesting that starvation wasn't the driving factor. But another interesting theory here is the tar pits. Over tens of thousands of years, natural asphalt seeped up from the ground with unsuspecting animals falling victim to the pits. Usually covered by dust, water, or leaves, some believe that the saber-toothed would try to prey on animals caught in the tar, only to fall victim themselves while feeding on their prey. Again, it's an interesting theory and could be the reason why numerous fossils and bones of saber-toothed tigers were found at the pits, which is now a tourist attraction. But to say an entire species went extinct, I think that may be a bit of a stretch as well. And considering how these things were known to expand across North and South America, as well as Asia, well, they clearly weren't only hanging around Southern California. An interesting pattern that seems to be consistent with the extinction of these large mammals, humans. 
Although we've technically been around for a very long time, some believe our ancestors led to the demise of the saber-toothed tiger. To no surprise, this theory has also been disputed. The Clovis tribe, which hunted woolly mammoths and were known for advancing their hunting skills in general, may have hunted the saber-toothed tiger for sport or protection. It's likely the latter, more so than the former, considering how back then people probably weren't killing just for the sake of it. Another interesting factor is temperatures. As temperatures actually rose, it seemed the animals had a tougher time adapting. Some sources claim they lived in Beringia, which is a former subcontinent that connected Russia and Siberia to Canada and the United States over the Arctic and Pacific. Even during the Ice Age, this area didn't get much snow, so it was great for both the saber-toothed and our good pal, the short-faced bear. However, as temperatures rose, this subcontinent started to literally drown as sea levels rose. Some of the saber-toothed tigers were likely able to migrate, which explains their fossils being found in different continents and countries all over the world. However, at the end of the day, it seems there's still a lot of debate regarding what actually sent these things into extinction. It seems the most common consensus here is that a mix of rising temperature and human colonization led to not only a lack of food supply for the saber-toothed tiger, but actually a lack of habitat as well. Hopefully over the years, as more research is conducted, we'll be able to find a more concrete answer regarding this one. But as we know when talking about literally anything prehistoric, only time will tell. And that is it for this one guys. As always, let us know your thoughts in that comment section down below and feel free to let us know what other videos you'd like to see on here. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video, what if there is no cure for the virus? Cormac said, it's fine, I'll just load a quick save. I mean, that's always, I've always wondered, like, imagine if in real life you could just respawn. Like, imagine if we didn't actually die and like after death, we just appeared somewhere else in the world. Think about how crazy of an idea that would be. Like if you really try to think about that. The Kidler 26 said, you can't cure a virus, there could only be a vaccine for it. I don't know, because people were saying apparently HIV was cured, and I, I probably should have researched this more before the comment section, but y you guys don't really, I hope you don't take me that seriously in the comment section. This is more like a fun, interactive way. But I mean, <laughs> what's your definition of a cure? Because technically if you have a vaccine for something, you abolish it, that is the cure. Like polio is no longer a thing because we've had a cure for it, and now no one ever has it anywhere. So technically that is a cure. Just saying. Zachary Kim said, then we could all wait until August 2028 for aliens. I'll be honest, Zach, I, I, why 2028? I was just curious, like what, do you know something that we don't? In the next eight years, something's gonna happen? Like, why not next year? Why not next month? Why August 2028? That's, that's pretty specific, buddy. Anyways, guys, that does it for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein, and we'll see you in the next one.